Hello, everyone. I'm Janine Donnelly, Manager of Webinars for Tech Channel, and I'd like to welcome you to our presentation. We will be holding a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. You may ask a question at any time during the event by entering it into the Q&A panel. If you experience technical difficulties during the webinar, please use the Q&A panel to alert us, and someone will assist you. You may download a PDF version of the slide deck by clicking on the drop-down menu labeled Event Resources, and you'll find that on the left side of your screen. There you will also find a white paper on the topic we'll be discussing today, so be sure to check that out and know that you can download those right from the platform without being disconnected from the webinar. Today's webinar, Exploiting the Value of Distributed Storage with Mainframe Virtual Tape, is sponsored by Optica Technologies. Our featured speakers today are Michael Daly and Sean Seitz. Michael is the Chief Operating Officer and Vice President of Worldwide Sales for Optica. Michael joined Optica in 2007. Prior to joining Optica, Michael held executive positions at several different IT companies, including a software as a service startup, a leading provider of storage area and networking solutions, as well as at IBM. Sean is Vice President of Technical Services, responsible for technical sales, service delivery, and product support worldwide. His 30 plus years of mainframe experience includes business management and executive positions in technical sales and support, product management, business development, and consulting. And so with our introductions complete, Michael, I'll turn the presentation over to you. Great, thanks, Janine, appreciate it. Uh, well, let me do this, I, I'm gonna take you through the agenda and, uh, and really partner with Sean uh, to cover the material today. Uh, we're gonna cover a little bit of Optica background and maybe take a little bit of a different, uh, a different position on it because we're talking about uh, using ZVT, our ZVT product to support distributed uh, storage. And, and then I'll cover a little bit of information on, on our view of the, this is our view of the mainframe virtual tape market and kind of how that plays out in the context of distributed storage. Uh, I'll give you an overview of the ZVT family uh, and some of the enhanced features that we have that are, are kind of fully available uh, for the 5000 Flex product. And then Sean will take you through a little more detail, the more technical positioning on the ZVT 5000 Flex, how it works, kind of think through the, the technical and business benefits around, around why it makes sense at this point in time to leverage distributed storage for mainframe virtual tape. they will also spend some time talking about support because obviously support is key. Um, the way we support customers uh, effectively sitting between the mainframe and a third party device is kind of in our DNA and Sean will take you through that. Uh, and then I'll take you through some, some use case examples um, just to, so you can use your imagination. We, we're going to use specific storage uh, products in those use cases, but, but, but clearly the, the, the positioning here is, uh, is agnostic, right? It's, it's your storage. It's, it's your choice as to what you want to marry with ZVT in order to get the best value out of your investment. Uh, then the other thing we want to make sure you understand is, is this ZVT 5000 Flex is, is a full share part of our portfolio. So the assumption here is you can leverage the investment in distributed storage, uh, marry that with ZVT 5000 Flex, and still get all the benefits of ZVT. And so Sean will show you why our flex flexible replication options matter why one-click DR and the ability to, to execute on your DR tests and recovery plans uh, are enhanced with ZVT across the board, how we do migration, how we make that easy, uh, and how we've incorporated innovative capabilities like host list migration uh, into, those, uh, into those offerings, uh, and then something called uh, enhanced data integrity checking, which is a peace of mind feature uh, that we've developed, which really speaks to our, our are not only our heritage in mainframe, um, but our commitment uh, to the quality uh, and the integrity of the volumes that uh, that we're writing. And then we'll 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 provide a quick summary. And and I think what we've done today is we're we're not going to 
overwhelm you in terms of the number of charts that we cover. So we, we hope we'll have uh, a fair amount of time for, uh, for Q&A as we get to the end of the discussion. So we, uh, we appreciate uh, Janine and Tech Channel uh, setting us up today, and they've done a fantastic job. And uh, let's, let's, let's get into the presentation. Uh, so a little bit of background on Optica. We've been in business for over 50 years. Uh, we are installed in thousands of data centers around the world. And, uh, and that's allowed us to make a significant investment in, in, in mainframe skills, both engineering, uh, technical, uh, and sales resources. Uh, and we've invested heavily in a, in a mainframe lab uh, and all of the necessary capabilities in our headquarters in Louisville, Colorado, to support uh, a myriad of customers uh, and, and, and devices with our systems. We've been a strategic business partner of, of IBM Z, for nearly 20 years since 2002, and, and the exclusive provider of protocol converters since that time. And that, and that combination of, uh, of being a strategic uh, partner of IBM's and having our systems installed in thousands of data centers has really given us uh, a couple things. It's given us expertise in, in virtual tape and tape and devices that act like tape because 70% of the devices connected uh, to our protocol converters um, were, were, were tape devices. It's also given us a tremendous amount of depth and expertise in supporting third-party devices. Those devices sat between the mainframe uh, and, and that third-party device, so we needed to develop systems, processes, and capabilities to service and support those customers in a manner that, uh, that they expected, and, and, and as you know, as a mainframe user or, or mainframe partner or mainframe uh, uh, consultant, uh, the expectations of, of the mainframe environment are, uh, are, are high, and, and so we need to develop the capabilities to support that. Uh, with IBM Z support, and, and I say that, we introduced Z, ZBT in January 2015, and by, by support I mean as a strategic partner of IBM, we would, we would sit down with them looking for gaps in, uh, in the ecosystem and, and places where mainframe customers were uh, not being served to the fullest capability. And, and IBM identified mainframe virtual tape as a play uh, where a solution from Optica would add value and, and customer choice to customers. And so we announced the product in 2015, announced the next generation of the product in May of 2018, and we've enjoyed broad market acceptance. And that's allowed us to continue to invest in enhancements and, and features to make the product better, uh, easier to use, uh, easier to migrate to, uh, easier to manage. And, and we're very proud of that. And then combined with that, uh, the constant throughout this whole process has been our world-class service and support. Sean heads up a team uh, that supports our technologies from, from pre-sale through the design, implementation, and post-sale support. Um, and that continuity uh, has, has put our customers in a position to be highly satisfied uh, with the solutions that we deliver. Uh, and we take great pride in that as, as we take you through our products and technologies today. So let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the mainframe virtual tape market. We've presented charts like this in the past, and, and one thing hasn't changed is it's, it, it, is a, it is a relatively small market in the overall context of things. I mean the mainframe virtual tape market. Um, IDC stopped kind of covering the market discreetly, um, you know, in the, in the late 2015, 16, but, but we can confidently say that the market is is less than $500 million annually. Part of that has to do with mainframe data characteristics, right? Main, the mainframe is, has longstanding processes and, and planning uh, that are well established and understood. Data sets in mainframe are, are structured. There's a clear policy for, uh, for retention and security. And as a result, mainframe growth has been very predictable, typically kind of in that zero to 10% range. Uh, and, that's, and, that's, and that's what's kind of helped define this market for mainframe virtual tape. The established players, right, the tenured participants, IBM and Dell EMC, their products, they're, they're large, they're complex, they're, they're mature, they're, you know, they're certainly rock-solid products. 
um, but they tend to be much more expensive to implement and manage. Um, they take a little bit of a proprietary pr approach in, in, that, um, in that they've got you know, integrated storage, very little flexibility. And what we've seen is, is the innovation and pace um, has, has slowed. It's a smaller market. Um, in the, and when you put it in the context of, of the overall market opportunity that, that IBM and, and Dell are pursuing, it is harder for, for this area of the business um, to, to get the investment uh, at, the, at the level and the rate and pace that might be required for innovation. Optica and, and ZDT is really positioned as, uh, as an alternative. It's, it's a rapidly growing solution. Um, and we've done it with a couple of key focus areas, right? One, making the products easy to implement and manage. We want to make sure that they're, they're flexible, affordable, long platform life type products. Um, we absolutely recognize there's a place for integrated storage and we have integrated storage op options. Um, but we also want to be open and, and innovative and, and creative. And, and so we wanted to make sure that we provided products that offer true storage choice. So with that, I'm gonna take you through um, a little bit of kind of what's going on in the distributed systems view. Why does it make sense now? Why are we talking about Flex now? Well, obviously, number one, it's a massive market in, in relative terms, right? The, the, the comparison you see of just the fourth quarter spend, right, in, in enterprise OEM storage, $7.8 billion in just one quarter against a $500 million annual number. So it, it obviously dwarfs the size of the mainframe virtual tape market. And then you've got compound growth on top of that. Um, and so that, that kind of data sprawl, that the challenges that that creates has required IT organizations to look at right, innovative storage solutions to deal with the scale and the challenges of unifying the data in that environment. So they're exploiting tools like software divine storage, flash, analytics, tiering, cloud, all of those capabilities. But at the end of the day, right, whether it's, whether it's IBM or, or Dell or Optica, we're, we're all writing volumes to distributed storage. And we think it's, now is a great time. Compatibility isn't an issue. It's, it's just a matter of how do you want to leverage your investment uh, in, in distributed storage? Um, is there a way to do that, to, to take advantage of the latest features, to take advantage of, of, of your scale, to take advantage of the benefit of, of falling price per terabytes over time? And if you do that, um, what kind of expectations can you have in terms of your total cost of ownership being lower? Um, are there benefits from uh, freedom of choice or vendor lock-in? And are there alternative ways to cascade or accelerate the transition uh, to new storage by, by, by making the right trade-offs and, and looking at mainframe virtual tape as an application that can leverage this capability? Um, and so the question we kind of want to try to address today is, hey, how can we exploit this investment without compromising the the functionality of a virtual tape system or, or, or adding any, uh, any risk to my recovery time objectives or my recovery point objectives around virtual tape. So that kind of sets up the conversation for today. And now what I'll do is, is just kind of, kind of reintroduce you to our, our product offerings and our enhanced features. And then I'll have Sean drill down a little bit more into how ZDT works and some examples of use case and then the more, more detailed coverage of, of some of the enhanced features of ZDT that are available on, on the 5000 Flex. So with that, let's take a look at, uh, at, the product, at the product family. As I said, we do, hey, we recognize there's a place for solutions with integrated storage. That's the way that the customers have, have purchased virtual tape for, for many years. There is a play for that. And we've got two products in our portfolio uh, that deliver against that requirement real well. The first is the, the 5000 INAS. That is our most modular, scalable, uh, capable of HA and, and high levels of resiliency. It scales from modularly from 100 terabytes to multi petabyte, petabytes of capability uh, using our intelligent storage node and, and, and capacity storage node capability. 
we can deploy it in an HA architecture. So anywhere from one to eight virtual tape nodes, uh, we can scale virtual tape drives and performance to up to 8,000 meg per second. Um, we don't uh, we don't license performance, so each each node delivers a thousand meg per second, and gives you the capability to, uh, or gives us the capability to work with you to architect a solution that's going to meet your needs uh, for for performance, resiliency, capacity, uh, and whatnot. Uh, we are also the the only company that leverages both hardware compression and deduplication. Uh, to drive uh, the effective capacity capabilities of our solution. We've done rigorous testing in this area and in our implementation um, in, in every instance, in, in, in every mainframe data set, we've seen an advantage in doing so and our customers have enjoyed that in terms of a more economical use of, of the storage that's part of our integrated 5000 INAPS offering. We also use a capability called WAN Optimized Replication with this product that allows us to uh, replicate only change deduplicated data for our customers. A couple of examples of the 5000 INAS starts as low as a, as small as a, a 4U capable system. That's with 384 terabytes of effective capacity. Our base uh, HA unit is, is, uh, is a 12U solution that delivers three quarters of a petabyte of, of capacity and 2000 meg of, of performance. But again, it's, it's, it's highly scalable, highly flexible for customers that want an integrated storage option. 3000i, we, we typically target to customers that are less than 100 terabytes of capacity. We have three different effective capacity levels there. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, everything is internal. So it's, it's, it's RAID 6 uh, internal storage. Uh, it's a 2U solution. We, we typically deliver that with a, a smaller number of virtual tape drives, 16, but it, it can certainly be deployed with as many as 256 drives, and that delivers 1,000 meg of performance. Uh, the 5,000 Flex, which is where we're going to spend our time today, we think of it as a, uh, a strategic platform in that it can support uh, any, any NFS or fiber channel storage uh, products it's capable of delivering a lot of the HA capabilities of the 5000 INAS, meaning we can architect and cluster the virtual tape nodes. Uh, we can scale virtual tape drives uh, up to a, a, you know, a massive 2048 number. We can deliver high performance. And, and we don't really compromise, uh, in our view, we don't compromise on, on features, function, or support. So in our view, 5000 Flex is designed uh, for enterprises who really want storage choice. And the advantages we get across the portfolio, right, we use that same virtual tape node technology across all three products, is ease of use, both through our, uh, our GUI, uh, anything you can do with the, uh, the, the graphical user interface, you can do with uh, CLI or JCL. Hardware compression is across the board. Um, the flexible replication options, which Sean will go into, as well as one-click DR, easy migration, and, and world-class service and support. So, so that standard of, of function and capability uh, is not compromised with 5000 Flex. Okay, let's move on. I'm just going to introduce you to some of the enhanced features, and then Sean will drill down on these in a little bit more detail. Um, from a security and integrity point of view, obviously we're providing the capability for customers to do uh, encryption at rest in flight. For INAS customers, it's a storage feature. Uh, if, if, if WORM is a requirement, that's, that's something we can deliver. Uh, enhanced data integrity is that, is that peace of mind uh, capability uh, that, that's unique to ZDT. And Sean, you'll, Sean will take you through how that works in a little bit more detail. Um, replication and monitoring which, uh, and, and cloud support, which I've kind of covered a little bit. Sean will go into more detail, but that's one of the keys to, to really being able to provide uh, 5,000 flex uh, and, and, and really trying to give customers the capability of storage choice because we can replicate from any storage device to storage device or virtual tape node to virtual tape node, which gives us the capability of, of, of supporting anybody's storage uh, it gives us the capability to provide support for heterogeneous storage uh, and, and third-party storage replication where, where that's in place. And you might want to leverage, you know, a single 
uh, replication capability across distributed and, uh, and mainframe. Migration, uh, we think we've got the, we've had to develop in order for, you know, customers to make the move easy for customers to move to ZBT. We've made migration easy. We've incorporated hostless migration, a hostless migration engine so that no mainframe MIPS are required to do the migration. Um, we started to bundle uh, in October of last year, uh, ZBT control center uh, for, Z, for ZOS customers. Um, that allows us to, as part of the migration, auto-synchronize the tape catalog. So even in a hostless uh, environment, the customer will know I exactly where that volume resides, whether it's on the legacy system or, or ZBT. Uh, it gives customers the ability to, uh, to audit the migration and know exactly where they are and really control the rate and pace so that it's uh, efficiently deployed and optimized for, uh, for their environment. On the operation side, it also gives us the capability to do automated scratch processing, enhanced reporting for customers that, uh, that want management reporting on their, uh, on their virtual tape applications. Uh, we talked about GUI in one click, which Sean will go into more detail on, and then multi-tenant support. And there's features of multi-tenant support that are great for service providers. They're also great for large enterprise customers that uh, have certain requirements for uh, isolating data uh, or workload or applications by um, by library or uh, or or policy or, or policy. Uh, we're not going to go through that a lot today, but those are those are those are some of the capabilities and enhanced features of of ZBT. Okay, with that, I am going to transition this to uh, to Sean Sites. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. So Mike set up the conversation nicely to drill down a little bit more deeply into our, what we call the ZBT 5000 Flex system for mainframe virtual tape. So this is a simplified graphic that kind of represents everybody's computing environment that has a mainframe, right? So if you think about the Flex system that's shown in the middle there, that's kind of a gateway. Right, so that kind of sits in between the mainframe infrastructure and the distributed storage infrastructure. And the beauty of the Flex product is it is just that, it's completely flexible. And this is a good way to kind of visualize how the Flex virtual tape system can fit into your environment. So at the mainframe level, obviously everybody has a unique situation at the mainframe level, right? You may have single keck, you may have multiple mainframes in a single location, you may have mainframes that are distributed, you may have extended distance channel connectivity, right? You may run a single operating system, you may run all operating systems. You might use short wave chippage, you might use long wave. So everybody's environment is a little different, right? It doesn't really matter when it comes to virtual tape and the support that the Flex product provides. So the mainframe environment can be anything as shown here. And then, of course, there could be a FICON switching la layer. There could be directors or switches. There may not be. I think with all the consolidation of mainframes, I think FICON switching is, uh, has become minimized a bit. So you may have a direct connection uh, or an, a direct environment relative to FICON connectivity. So if you think about then below the gateway there and you kind of switch to the distributed environment, which essentially every mainframe environment has a distributed side of the house, right? You may have a combination of storage vendors. You may have standardized on a single vendor. Um, you may have, it may be IP-based storage network. It might be SAN, uh, storage area network, fiber channel-based uh, connectivity. You may have switching that you want to leverage between the flex systems and your distributed storage. You may have that direct connected. It depends on your application. But the beauty of the Flex box is that you can leverage the Flex system for your mainframe virtual tape application in any environment. And that goes for uh, the mainframe side as well as the distributed side when it comes to leveraging the storage. Okay. So the Flex box is, is essentially a gateway, right? And as Mike said, our heritage is uh, solutions that sit on the mainframe channel. Uh, we have thousands of converters installed globally. 
virtually every data center in the world at some point had to use protocol converters, almost every single one. And so we have a we have really a, a really nice heritage relative to this type of a gateway product. So the Flexbox was natural for us, and it is quite unique to the industry, as Mike pointed out. Uh, the virtual tape node of the Flex system does have hardware compression, as Mike alluded to. Typically, we design based on a four to one reduction ratio. That's a conservative ratio when it comes to hardware compression on the Flexbox. Often we see higher. Of course, that's going to depend on your data sets. And then you can scale the performance of the Flex system by adding virtual tape nodes. Each virtual tape node has two FICON channels on it and, uh, and, a and delivers 1,000 megabytes a second on average. And then so we don't license that performance. We don't throttle that performance like some vendors do. You add performance by adding virtual tape nodes. Also by adding virtual tape nodes, you're adding resiliency, you're adding availability because we cluster those when there's multiple vir virtual tape nodes. We cluster those, share the tape database between them. It always remains synchronized across all virtual tape nodes in the cluster. And so that provides a, a level of redundancy and availability um, that you may want architected in your virtual tape system. And it also supports the act, uh, the active active architecture. So we can actually, uh, we have designed these solutions so that they can essentially be active active, sitting side by side in, an, uh, in a production environment using synchronous replication. So that you essentially have two systems that remain online uh, with identical data at all times. Um, the storage capacity uh, uh, that we're talking about can be any. It can be fiber channel attached or 10 gig NFS or 1 gig NFS attached, any brand. Um, and then we leverage, as Mike pointed out, the storage features. So the advanced storage features that become more advanced every day in the distributed world, we can you can totally take advantage of those that feature set, right? And whether it's tiering, replication, security features, uh, deduplication, et cetera, those are all exploited uh, when you combine that distributed storage with the flex with the flex system. Okay. Okay. Uh, support is an interesting and complicated issue, obviously, for mainframe clients. <clears throat> Pardon me. And as Mike has alluded to uh, previously, this is our heritage. And given the nature of protocol converters uh, and support for those thousands of converters that we've implemented in data centers, and by the way, continue to implement in mainframe data centers, yes, there are still customers that are coming, modernizing their mainframe, and they're coming from a mainframe platform that still supports SCON channels and SCON devices to a FICON only mainframe and there's still demand for our protocol converters. We just got a request for a quote today. We're still shipping them. We're still supporting hundreds of converters globally. So, uh, so we're very used to this model, supporting a product that is essentially a gateway. It sits between the mainframe and devices. And in most cases, those devices are tape devices or devices that emulate tape. So we, over time, had, have developed methodologies, and systems and tracing and logging functionality that allows us to be effective in the support of those products. And those port perfectly over to the ZBT family of products, and we've done just that. And so I would say we're uniquely qualified to support, to market, to manufacture, implement, and support a mainframe virtual tape solution that allows you, the customer, to put any storage on the back side of it. Uh, that might be very scary for for some vendors, but we're used to that. We've developed a, a heritage around that. Uh, most of the time when we take a support call for a protocol converter, it ends up being an issue that is outside of the converter. It's somewhere on the channel, in the channel path somewhere. It's either a, a, a FICON card, an SFP, a cable, a device issue, right? More than half the time that we take a trouble call for a protocol converter, we are diagnosing the problem external to the to the protocol converter and we stay involved we help the other vendors in most of the cases it's ibm frankly because it's on the ibm channel so that ports perfectly to the zvt flex solution right 
we are not going to turn our back on an issue that is discovered to be and identified outside of the ZVT Flex system. We're going to stay involved, continue to troubleshoot with the storage vendor or the mainframe vendor or the you know whoever's involved, and we're going to see that to the end. So that's a, that puts us in a unique position and a very confident position in being able to offer a product like like a, a flexible or 5000 flex uh, mainframe virtual tape system. I wanted to point out one other thing that's unique that tends to be uh, viewed as very favorable by our customers, and that is we've had a partnership with IBM for a long time relative to support. And this partnership allows us to, to dispatch an IBM SSR to serve as our hands and feet on site at the customer location to replace defective hardware. So in the event of a power supply or a disk drive failure, uh, Optica dispatches the part and Optica dispatches the IBM person that arrives at your location badged as Optica. It's the same SSR that supports your mainframe in most cases. It's the local team, uh, but they are badged as Optica in this case, and they're there to support the Optica ZBT. So we, we value that partnership, and most of our customers really appreciate that partnership um, that, that IBM serves as Optica's hands and feet for hardware replacement actions. Okay, I wanted to provide some, some use case examples here. And I've got four examples. A couple of them are actual uh, designs and architectures developed for customers, and a couple of them are more theoretical. Uh, I've used different types and brands of distributed storage in my four examples, so keep in mind that they're interchangeable. You know, these, this is a, a flex box that's completely flexible, so any of the storage brands can be interchanged here in these use case examples. Uh, this is clearly an example of a distributed environment that virtually every mainframe data center has, right? So you have a server farm connected to a, a pool of distributed storage. That might be multiple brands of storage. It might be a single brand of storage, but it's clustered storage with a great deal of capacity. When you think about sharing that capacity, that distributed storage capacity with your mainframe virtual tape application, the Flex system allows you to do so, right? So in this case, we're sharing that clustered capacity, in this case, Infinidat storage, right? And we're carving out a pool of storage or a pool of capacity that we're dedicating to the mainframe virtual tape application, right? In this case, it can be NFS, it can be fiber channel, but you're sharing, the customer is leveraging that extra capacity that they they already have in this clustered pool of storage. They're carving out some capacity for the mainframe application. So you take that or extend that one step further, you know, the customer typically will have a DR location where they're replicating their open systems or distributed data to a DR location. Um, where they have, keep a copy of the data on the DR side for disaster recovery. So likewise, the Flexbox allows those customers to not only share the available distributed storage capacity for the mainframe virtual tape application, but also leverage the existing replication infrastructure. So this is an example of sharing that capacity on a clustered, in a clustered uh, storage setup, right? So you're actually leveraging that available capacity for the mainframe virtual tape. The second example is similar, but, but a little different in that you may want to, to isolate your storage node or your storage capacity for the mainframe virtual tape application. So in this case, we're showing pure storage flash blade, uh, and this customer may have a volume agreement uh, and, and have a very economical way to acquire pure flash blade capacity because they leverage so much of it in their distributive en environment. But they would like to keep it physically separate for their mainframe tape application. So in this case, they may choose to dedicate the flash blade uh, capacity and keep it physically separate from for their mainframe application, okay? But they still can take advantage of the economies that they've established in acquiring flash blade capacity. They can leverage the infrastructure for replication that they've already established between production and DR. Okay, so just another way to think about it where you have dedicated 
distributed storage. It does not have to be what we would call intermix in the back in the day, right? Where you're mixing uh, capacity in the same cluster of storage. This would be dedicated. Okay, so the third example happens to use IBM Flash System 5200 or FS5200. And this is their IBM's newest uh, model that they've added to the portfolio. And we've had quite about, uh, heard quite a bit of buzz about the 5200 and, and several customers who have asked for designs that include flex attaching to the IBM 5200. So the, the interesting, some of the interesting things about the 5200 is that it is a hybrid system. So it can be, it can be pure flash. It can be pure uh, SAS or spinning disk drives, or it can be a combination of the two. And with that comes a, a pretty interesting set of features that uh, that customers are talking about already. And that includes uh, storage tiering, it includes data deduplication, security features. So all of these features come standard on the 5200 in their software stack. So they're they're already present. They're not optionally purchased. They're all they're all there as part of the system. And so in this case. Uh, we've architected a solution for a client that is leveraging the 5200, uh, and they wanted to, to leverage that investment for their mainframe tape application. In this case, they're choosing to use replication between the storage nodes, where they could leverage replication between the virtual tape nodes of the Flex system, and we'll talk a little bit more about why you would choose one or the other, but in this case, they're leveraging the replication between the storage nodes. I will point out also in this case, uh, you'll notice two virtual tape nodes in each system. That gives the customer approximately 2,000 megabytes a second of performance. It gives them high availability as these are clustered together and uh, share a database in the event that one is lost. Uh, you don't lose access to your tape data. Okay, and then the fourth example, the last example, is one that just demonstrates that with the Flex system, you don't have to have an identical solution on the prod side as you do the DR side. In this case, we're showing an INAS system, which is our integrated storage, NFS storage, replicating to a Flex system that leverages, uh, in this case, pure storage, okay? This could be any combination. This could be our 3000i in production, replicating to a Flex box with any brand of storage on the back. The point is because of virtual tape node replication that we offer between virtual tape nodes, this makes it possible. We can be heterogeneous on the virtual tape system and models that we're replicating between. So a customer is interested in INAS for scalability and modularity, let's say, in the prod site, but they have extra uh, pure storage capacity in the DR site that they want to leverage for, uh, for the DR application for mainframe tape. Also, the cloud, cloud connectivity, right? So we're showing cloud connectivity here to a gateway. We can connect to any third-party gateway, public or private, via NFS mount. So as long as the gateway provides NFS mount capability, we attach to it and we can set up policy to replicate select volumes to the cloud gateway, okay? So this can be architected on the production side. It can be architected on the DR side. Either way, full flexibility for cloud support in this example. Okay, I wanted to highlight just several of the advanced features and, and dive a little more deeply into it. And this, this slide highlights the, the various replication options that are available. I mentioned virtual tape node replication. One of the really nice advantages of virtual tape node replication that you can use with the Flex system is that it provides detailed monitoring and management of the replication process from the GUI, okay? It's actually available on all models, uh, all three of the ZVT models. Um, and on the right here, you see, uh, I don't think it's very readable here, but this is just a screen capture from the GUI. This happens to be our tape, what we call our tape management screen. So we have a tape management system built into the GUI of the product, again, for all three models, that basically shows the, the tape inventory or tape database. And then as part of that, 
you can actually monitor replication when you're using VTN replication. You can monitor that in the tape management screen. So by volume, by Valser, at the Valser level, you can see uh, the status of that volume relative to replication, one of four status. Uh, in progress, in the queue to be replicated, failed replication, or completed, okay? So you can see that by volume. Once it's been successfully replicated, it has a date and time stamp, so you know exactly when the last uh, replication successfully completed. So VTN replication offers that really nice monitoring at a Valser level uh, in the GUI. Uh, the intelligent storage node, which is part of our 5000 INAS, that's the integrated storage that comes with the INAS model, offers what we call WAN optimized replication. And Mike alluded to this. Given that we offer data reduction technology in the INAS system, that's a compression plus deduplication, uh, only the changed deduplicated data is actually transferred across the wire in a replication session. So it makes it highly efficient. And so if you have a low bandwidth link between your prod and DR locations, ISN replication is very efficient and very nice match uh, for those situations. And then finally, the Flex system specifically can leverage the storage replication feature set, which we've talked about already, right? So with the Flex box, you actually have options. You can leverage VTN replication. You can also leverage the replication capability and functionality of the storage uh, that you're using, okay? So you have really nice flexibility for replication uh, across all models of the ZVT. Sean, we have some customers okay, that will leverage Mike, two types, right, as well, Sean? I mean, meaning in an active-active yeah, environment, yeah. you might have uh, VTN replication between systems um, and then ISN replication or, or third-party replication between sites. It's a great point. So if a customer has deployed I, uh, INAS systems in their prod and DR, they may choose to use ISN replication for the WAN optimized uh, feature between prod and DR, but at the same time, leverage VTN replication to write volumes to the cloud or write volumes to a vault or write volumes to a different location. So yes, we have customers that have leveraged both types of replication at the same time. One click DR, so Mike mentioned this. This is uh, something that we, on every implementation that we do, we set up what we call one-click DR. And it's an automated process that facilitates the DR testing for the customer, okay? So essentially with a single click in the GUI, it prepares the DR ZVT and the file system for DR testing or for an actual disaster. So we customize the script. We customize a script at implementation time based on the customer's uh, requirements and then load it into the ZVT and then with a single click from the ZVT GUI, it executes the script. And in the case of the flex model, which is uh, pictured here in the graphic, certainly part of the process depends on the storage brand because typically distributed storage is gonna offer a capability that they call clone or they call flash copy or snap copy, uh, a capability that will duplicate the file system or duplicate the Valsir ranges, okay? So part of our automation that we set up at implementation is takes advantage of that capability. So specifically, when you execute one-click DR, it takes that replicated production file system, creates a copy of it. Typically, that copy is pointers only, typically, and that's gonna be storage dependent. Typically, that's just pointers, so it's not consuming additional capacity or double the capacity, taking up a very, very tiny amount, relative small amount of storage capacity when you clone or take a, a snap copy of that file system. And then that, that cloned file system is mounted and then online to the DR mainframe and is ready for testing. Meanwhile, replication continues. So replication is uninterrupted in the one-click DR process. So point being, in summary, we actually work with the client to customize the one-click DR process. We set it up and test it at implementation time for the client, and that 
that goes for the flex model as well. Mike mentioned hostless migration. This is unique to the industry, and this has enabled us to really simplify the migration process for customers. And that's regardless of what the legacy tape system is, right? As a, as a relatively newer entry or entrant into the virtual tape space, competing with IBM and Dell EMC and others who have fine products and have been installed for a long time, it was, it was very important for us to develop a methodology that simplified the process for customers. And we've done that with hostless, what we call hostless migration. So essentially, uh, we emulate the host channel in the ZVT, and it does not require any special hardware or software in ZVT. It's resident within the ZVT, and you can essentially configure that FICOM port on the ZVT, either or both FICOM ports, to be kind of standard virtual tape ports, or you can configure them with a click, a single click, to become a migration port. And when, when we set the ZVT uh, FICOM port to be in migration mode, it's essentially emulating the mainframe attached to the legacy tape system. Now that legacy tape, tape system can be anything. It can be physical tape. It can be any brand of virtual tape. It does not matter. We, we connect uh, one of the FICON ports uh, from a single VTN, in this example, to the legacy tape system, while one of the second port from the virtual tape node is attached to the mainframe. Meanwhile, the legacy tape system remains online to the mainframe as well. So that's the beauty of ZVT Control Center that Mike mentioned. ZVT Control Center is a software package that we install on the mainframe. It does install under ZOS, so this is a ZOS-specific product, right? But what it allows you to do is actually perform a migration from your legacy system to the ZVT during live tape operations because it, it keeps track of whether the tape has been imported to the ZVT or not, and then uh, tape mount or tape uh, mount requests are directed to the proper technology. If the tape has not been migrated yet, the mount request goes to the legacy system. If it's already been imported to the ZVT, the mount request goes to the ZVT. So you can essentially set up a migration plan that we assist you in doing, and then you can start migrating from the legacy system to the ZVT in real time during live tape operations you can stop it and start it at any time. There's an audit capability that keeps track of where you are. So when you restart, it picks up right where it left off. There's a verify function that allows you to literally verify that the tape was, uh, can be read once it's imported. It has lots of interesting capability, but the most important is that it does not, the data is not imported through the mainframe. It's imported directly into the ZBT from the legacy tape system so it does not consume host cycles um, or, or MIPS at all to do this process. And then secondly, it can be done live in a live tape environment. It won't impact your, the customer's uh, normal tape operations. So it's very unique and, uh, and really simplifies what I would call probably the most important factor to a customer when they choose to change their, their tape environment, right? That's going to be the first thing they ask about. How are you going to get me onto the new system with as little risk and as little disruption as possible? And we think we have a very uh, unique way to do that with hostless migration. Okay, data integrity checking. Uh, the mainframe customer expects their data to be there, accessible, and accurate. This is just a peace of mind feature that you can set, you can configure, you can turn it on, you can turn it off. It's up to you. It's a peace of mind feature that we have uh, added to ZVT. So whenever uh, data is written from the mainframe, it also writes a CRC, right? So that CRC is passed to the ZVT and stored with the data. As you can see on the right hand of, of this graphic here, the data is stored in the ZVT in what we call the AWS file. And then the CRC we store in what we call an offset file. So the mainframe CRC is stored with every block of data that's written to the ZVT. What the data integrity feature does, checking feature does, is we rebuild the CRC and compare it to the mainframe CRC. So we're gonna verify that that data is readable. It doesn't matter if it's one day after it's been uh, written to the ZVT, one year or 10 years later, 
the data integrity checking feature will verify that that, that volume is readable and that it has not been corrupted over time. So you can set this up to run overnight in the background as a background task. You can even set it up to run what we would call synchronously uh, where it actually verifies the data before it unloads the tape. So you can run it in a couple different modes uh, and, or, or not at all, but it gives you the capability to be very confident for compliance reasons and peace of mind reasons that your data is gonna be there and readable no matter where it is in the life cycle of the data. Okay. And let me just wrap this up and then we can uh, move to some questions. So kind of just to summarize the advantages, the base technology across the family of ZVT, we feel is the most modular, flexible, scalable offering in the industry, right? We're using high quality uh, hardware. It's an extended life platform where a lot of vendors, uh, you, you're forced to, after three years of use, you're forced to replace it and upgrade it for an end of, end of support reasons. We have an extended life on our platform. So our life cycle is more like five to seven years on hardware. So that's unique in the industry. Every, every uh, model within the family offers that intuitive GUI, but you can also do everything that you can do in the GUI can be done via CLI or JCL. And we'd make it as simple as possible to implement it, manage it, and migrate to it. The advanced features we've covered, one click DR, a complete set of uh, replication features depends on your environment, your requirements, but we have a broad set of, uh, of, of replication options depending on, on how you're implementing the solution. Ease of migration with hostless migration capability that we talked about that does not consume mainframe MSUs or cycles to move the data to the ZVT. We support cloud as discussed, either in the, the, the prod site or the DR site or both. And then finally, that commitment from Optica uh, around world-class support and product quality. And we, we take that very seriously, and we, we try to live up to that every day, is that world-class reputation for quality products and quality service. And then, um, as Mike mentioned, we're very nimble. We, uh, we are very innovative. We can take customer feedback and request for feature function and implement that in a relatively fast manner. Uh, unlike a lot of, the, uh, of our competition. And then uh, the investment we've made in, in our integration lab in, uh, in Boulder, Colorado area is extensive. We have all the tape, we partner with all the tape management products and tools, so we're, we're completely uh, integrated and compatible at all times with all the tape management products. And then uh, summarizing into what we believe is the, the best TCO in the industry over, the, over a three to five year period. So uh, we mentioned that there are some resources uh, available, and these are live links. So feel free to go ahead and click on these uh, to our white paper, our website, the integrity checking write-up, uh, et cetera. So these resources are available to you as live links at any time. And that takes us to uh, a few minutes. We have remaining seven minutes or so for, for questions. So I'm going to actually turn it over to Mike. And Mike is going to moderate the questions from the audience. And we, uh, so I encourage you, if you haven't asked questions yet, feel free to go ahead and type in your question. And we're going to answer as many as we can here with our remaining time. Yeah, thanks, Sean. I've done, done my best to kind of try to kind of field these and consolidate them and organize them. So obviously the focus is, is for you and, and your, your team, if necessary, to, uh, to answer these because they kind of take on a little bit more of a technical bet. The first one I'm going to ask you is kind of I'm going to combine two questions because right, I think it kind of they kind of relate. Uh, first is we're, if we're refreshing our distributed storage, can can ZVT Flex help us reuse our and they're using the term kind of n minus one storage capacity and does and does ZVT 5000 Flex require us to use the same storage in the prod site that we use in the in the DR site? You might have answered this a little bit in the presentation, but I thought you might be able to refine that a little bit. Yeah, you bet. Thanks. Uh, it's a good question. Good, good set of questions there. So, the first one: Can we reuse our distributed storage uh, when we refresh that and leverage the older storage for the mainframe virtual tape application with Flex? The answer is absolutely. In fact, we have a couple of customers have done just that. 
So yes, the answer is absolutely, and that's a common a common situation and one that uh, you should consider. If it if there's useful life and supportability in that storage node, absolutely, uh, it can be redeployed for mainframe virtual tape with the ZBT flex system. And then does uh, the flex system require to use you to use the same storage in prod and DR? The answer is no. Uh, you can be completely heterogeneous there. You can use one brand in prod and another brand in DR. No problem whatsoever. Um, and the, I think the beauty there is that we have VTN replication that will occur between the virtual tape nodes. And as mentioned, there's several different ways you can set that up, whether it's synchronous or asynchronous background or, uh, or synchronously. So uh, you have full flexibility with the storage choices uh, with the flex model. OK. Uh, another one here is, and this is actually somewhat relevant as well because of the the, the way that, that people uh, might transition, you know, from distrib undistributed storage and it might be different than the mainframe kind of upgrade cycle or planning cycle. If we decide to replace or refresh our storage, I think, I assume they mean distributed storage, while ZVT is deployed, 5,000 flex, I assume, what's the impact, right? Do I need to replace ZVT as well? You know, how do I how do I plan for that, or is that a, a concern? That's a that's actually a relatively common occurrence as well. So, uh, it, we we have customers that are using Flex and have deployed a, uh, originally one brand of storage, and have made a change either on a wholesale basis in their environment, or they have an end of support issue on the storage node and they they change the storage. So the first answer is you do not have to change the virtual tape node. Absolutely not. Uh, the two are not connected. So changing or refreshing the, the back end storage on a flex system does not impact the virtual tape node life whatsoever. Uh, and then in terms of what's the impact to that, uh, it, it's relatively minor. It does require an outage because the, the data has to be obviously moved or migrated from the uh, to the from the existing storage to the new storage. That can be simply done through the ZVT virtual tape node. So we use utilities to move that data from the old storage node to the new, and we, we rebuild the tape database once that data has been moved over to the new storage, and off we go. So with some planning, the impact is actually very, very minimal. It's, it's simple to do that. OK. Uh, here's one a little, little different direction. Uh, it's talking about ZVT Control Center. You kind of tell me a little bit about the process of loading ZVT Control Center on the mainframe. Is it kind of what's the time uh, required for 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 doing that? And are there Z Z system requirements? Anything else to consider? Good question. So the ZVT Control Center is a software product that comes bundled with ZVT. Just as a reminder. With any ZVT being sold into a ZOS environment, ZVT Control Center is included. And it is installed in the mainframe under ZOS. So uh, we will uh, help the customer with that install. It's a simple download. And then we will uh, assist the customer in the installation and configuration, which is, is very straightforward. It's not complicated with our support and our help. So we get that set up and configured for the client. Um, generally, that process takes an hour uh, at the most to get that uh, set up and configured, installed and configured. And there are no special requirements um, from a Z system perspective. So it's a, it's a very minimal process to implement and configure the ZVT Control Center. And the benefits of ZVT Control Center are terrific, as we talked about, not only for migration, uh, which was highlighted, but also there's some really slick management and reporting capabilities of Z, ZCC as well that add value to the ZBT investment. Okay. Well, with that, I think we're, I don't think we have time for another question because we're almost at the top of the hour. So I'm going to turn it back over to Janine and she can wrap it up. Thanks. Thanks for your time today, everybody. Much appreciated. Thanks, Mike. Um, I also want to extend our appreciation. Thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar. 
I also want to thank Mike and Sean for sharing your expertise with us today. Later this week, watch for a follow-up email. It will contain a link to the recording of today's webinar. That concludes our webinar. Thanks again for joining us, and have a great rest of your day.